Hey friends, Mark Holmes here. And um, <laughs> this is not the way you want to do a shower. It looks great and all that, but what you see is there is no trap here. First thing, that's the first issue. The second one is they cut the floor and as you can see, we got water like crazy. And on top of it, we have electrical wires that are in an electrical box. We have this false ceiling that's put in here and we have this faux paneling, which is, uh, yeah, here. Unfortunately, there's no way to get up in here without opening up the ceiling, in which case we're gonna have to open up the ceiling and see if we can either find the same material or start over. The bad part about this is, and I'm still trying to figure this out, is we have to take the drain out of this, which you can see it's a fiberglass pan and be able to screw that onto the shower pan. And there's no way to get in there without cutting open. We're gonna need a space that we can reach up in here. So we're gonna have to cut the floor up underneath of there, which means we're gonna need to cut a section out about so big. Now it's not, it's, a Hunter may have small fingers, but we've gotta get a big wrench. Um, typically, this fitting right up in here would be put on the shower tight beforehand and then you seat the whole shower bed, do a pressure test on it mm -hmm. and make sure it doesn't leak. Mm -hmm. So we have a major issue here and this is one of the reasons why I hate DUI TV and um, uh, DIY, okay? Because actually their do-it-yourself is a crock of crap. Mm -hmm. They go through, oh, we're going to make it look great. We're going to tack this on the wall. And the problem is, the problem is, it looks good. And, and I'm sure the ceiling looked great. Uh, the tile looked bad, you know, good. But here it is, a year or two later, you're now dealing with the leaks. And this is the only problem I've got to deal with. Where do you see, see the deck? Yeah. Okay, so upon further investigation in here... Um, we turned the water off in the shower and it was still slowly dripping and I went back upstairs I'm like is it backing up in there it's like no it's not backing up in there and what I noticed is the drain seems to be elevated and it's elevated because they put the rubber ring on the top side and it's actually meant to go on the bottom side so that way it seals up against it so what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna have to open up the wall and see if we can open up the subflooring enough and see if we can tighten it down. Ultimately, we're gonna to need to really replace all of it, but I'm trying to at least get a uh, temporary fix in here for at least now um, to get it going. So what I'm gonna do, um, I didn't quite come prepared, see we're still dripping even though the water's off because it's around the seat of it, is we're gonna go ahead and try and cut these at the joints and we'll make a new one here and try and reuse this. We can always get some kills upshot to spray that and that'll take care of the stain. But I'm afraid that they probably glued this in here and it's not gonna come off in one piece, in which case I may have to cut the drywall with that too, just like that. So we take it all down the same way and then put a couple of screws in it. I never get the easy jobs. So I've got, yeah, this is, hopefully you guys can see this. You can see, even though the water's off, it's still dripping. And now I've got enough space that I can see, make sure that it's not leaking around the seam, but I'm thinking that it's actually leaking up the top. But what we're gonna have to do, and this is where it's gonna get to be hard, because this is literally um, antique hard pine flooring. 
and it is tough but we've got to get enough space and cut back into the joist here so we can get a wrench in there and try and tighten it up see look you see the water right there you see it dripping boom right around the seal right there so it's coming from the drain pipe itself and this is a mistake that doesn't seem like it's a big mistake but it is the ring goes on the bottom and plumber's putty goes on the top little mistake ends up costing big time i think i'm beginning to sound like mike holmes hey so this is like 110 year old wood antique heart pine it's hard and then they got like three layers of masonite that's underneath of here and we had to be really really careful that we didn't cut the fiberglass pan um what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to get myself a big wrench and i'm going to try and tighten this down um and see if the, if we can get a seal on it that way we might get lucky enough that if we can squeeze that tight enough it'll do what it's supposed to do but ultimately they screwed up whoever it was you know this is the thing that drives me crazy when i see home improvement shows they go through and they rip everything out oh they boom and they put stuff up and it looks beautiful it looks great but um it, it's not so much what you see on the outside as it is what is going on inside the wall nobody looks at this nobody does but this is the most important thing that if you don't have this right that stuff you put on the outside is going to look like ass real soon all right. All right. So, so sometimes I got to think, which is not an easy thing for me to do, um, on how to try and fix this thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit more around the pipe right here, and I'm going to loosen up the nut here. So that way, and I'm going to cut right here, and I'm going to use a no hub or a fairing co connector to reconnect this. Although you can get the slideable ones where you can slide in and use that, but I'm just going to use the fairing co in here. Um, I went and got myself one of the wrenches to do this, but unfortunately, it's not quite big enough. So what I'm going to do is see these little holes right here. I'm going to take the screwdriver and a hammer and tap it loose. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll take that off and get the washer on the right side. And we'll end up putting the plumber's putty on top. Slides with, oh, there's, there, there's one of them right there. So we'll grab a hold of it. Now, that's the first thing we've done. And you can see that this is actually coming apart right there. We'll end up putting the other one on the other side. And so now we'll go ahead and we'll cut this. And we'll be able to pull that back, hopefully, through there. We can hope. see look at our washer it's got a tear in it that's where our leak is right there this is just meant to be the piece to slide on it so we're going to pull this through take the other washer off and put it down below and reinstall it that's it get the dust off you all right so here we are we're able to pull this on out and see this is the washer that should be below with the other one and this is the seat we're going to clean this off that we should be using plumber's putty now some people say use some silicone don't use silicone use plumber's putty I'm telling you don't listen to any of those fools that tell you to use caulk don't do it plumber's putty we're going to take some of this out of the can oh i love it i love a fresh can of plumber's putty okay look at this it's like play-doh 
but you want to work it to get it nice and soft and malleable because what this is going to do what's it going to do it's going to go through and it's going to make a nice cushioned seat on it and you see how thick that is that's the other part of the problem with this thing the way it was is that extra space raising it up meant water just kept sitting in that spot so now i've got it worked up what we do is it just goes around the base forgive me for having these angles and stuff but this is all done in real time and i drove 230 miles to get here this morning and i've got to also fix the deck the toilet needs a new rubber gasket on it got to also take care of that issue with the water um, from the toilet I'm gonna go get a rag so we can clean and dry this out before we put this on here but we're gonna push this back through real snug I'm gonna put our washer on here tighten it up and then make our connection on the pipe and guess what we'll be done with fixing well well we got to put the ceiling back in but we'll be done with it All right, we're gonna go below and we're gonna get the washer and the ring and stuff together. And then we're gonna push this in tight so we can tighten the sucker up. And then we're gonna put the ceiling back together. All right, so what we gonna do here is we have our no hub shielded coupling here for it. And what it has is it has a rubber gasket with a stop in it. And this will shield over and it'll tighten up with these quarter inch washers. And this will. There we go. Okay. All right, so now we can just tighten that sucker up here. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is tighten up our nut. And I'm going to get started with it, and then I'm going to go upstairs and push it down some to help seat it. And then try and tighten it up some more. And then we're going to do a water test to make sure that it is sealed. Unfortunately, our paper washer is dead. I'm going to go upstairs and we're going to push that down to make sure it's snug in there. It should be that we'll see the putty squeezed up. I just had knee surgery three weeks ago. So the stairs are... But you can see how that's squeezed up. The plumber's putty. What I'm going to do on here because I can't get it real tight. I'm actually going to take a step on it and make sure it's pushed down as snug as possible. Um, and then I'm gonna go out and get another ring. So let's make sure we're set in the center here.
Try and tighten it up just a little bit more, and then we'll do a water test. All right, so you can see I've tapped this tight as I can get it up in here. You see how the plumber's putty has squeezed out around that and is getting it a really good seal. Um, I've got the Farenco piece in place. Now we're going to take and turn on the water and see if this works. The other thing we're going to do correcting uh, a wrong is... We're gonna, we got an electric box to put this in. We're gonna, it's a metal box because with water right here, you don't really wanna have a, wires like this. We're gonna put the wire nuts in a box and we're gonna have this come out so we'll be able to plug back into it and put that back in place. So, and we'll also be able to use, I'm gonna take, and this is expensive nowadays, but take two by four pieces, a piece of two by four here, a piece of two by four here, and we'll be able to screw this piece of drywall back up in place. And we have quick grab adhesive. We'll glue that right back in place. And um, you'll really have to look hard to see where it will sticks. Let's go turn on the water and check it out. I'm gonna leave you here while I go upstairs. Hey, I'm back <laughs> and the water's on and it's no longer raining up in here okay maybe they'll go and say hey make it rain make it rain but not from the faucet let's double check up here a little closer so you can see where our leak was before was just coming through here right around there because some idiot didn't know that that's a paper washer it's amazing how one simple mistake, one simple mistake can cause a whole lot of headache. But fortunately, we figured a way that it's not, oh, do you hear, oh, listen, listen carefully. You hear that? Listen, listen. That's water draining. And it's going where it's supposed to, outside of the house, not in the house. Well, it is in the shower, but, but you, you know what I'm saying. It's actually working perfect, so. I'm going to go through, we're going to turn the power off over here, and we're going to take this, we're going to put this in an electrical box, I'm going to cut my 2x4s, which have gone down in price, by the way, 625 a 2x4. We're going to put those in here in place, we're going to screw our piece of drywall on, and we're going to glue this back in. And project number one is done. All right, so here's what we've done. Since we now have the leak taken care of, we are great with that. And we've gone through, and I've actually, this is an old trick that I've learned years ago. We've taken two by fours, and this is why we left some of the drywall hanging in here. We've taken two by fours and put it up in space, and we screwed around it to give us blocking to screw the other drywall in. And we've gone through, and you can see, we put ourselves an electric box on here for the, the outlet. So the wire comes out of it. So now we can take the piece of drywall that we cut out and we put that back in and then glue the other parts. And we're done with this part of this project. Yeah, let's see. This is hard when you have to do everything. Let's see. Let's see if we can do this. Put that up in the ceiling. Here, well, let's get the drill. Got the drywall up in there. Got the box. <laughs> and if we can get one screw in place, we are golden. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Voila, guys. All we have to do now is we'll take the original pieces we have some quick grab uh, adhesive and we'll put that in place and it will grab immediately and we'll pop the light fixture right back back up in here and we're good that's it we're done
Okay, and we have light. Not perfect as far as the repair goes, but you know, this ends up being the new seam and I'm gonna take the utility knife and kind of clean it up a little bit. We'll get some kills uh, upshot and we'll spray paint that and we'll fill in the other parts here. And unless you knew that there was a repair here, you wouldn't know there was a repair here. And that's actually a little more painless than what we thought it was gonna be. I'm Mark Holmes and I'll see you later.